Hi, I'm Matt Mayfield, and you're watching the Audio Fundamentals course. Today, we'll take a look at memory management and specifically how most hardware devices like synthesizers, guitar effects, and anything else that's controlled digitally, devices like that, how they manage memory. So the things we'll talk about are linear versus nonlinear storage, the way data is organized, some of the advantages of nonlinear storage, and uh, we'll briefly review the types of storage. The first thing that I want to draw a distinction between is linear and nonlinear storage or access. Usually in the analog domain, we're used to linear access to information. One example of this is our lifetimes, real lifetime. You can go forward, but you can't go back and you cannot jump around. If you're old enough to remember using analog tape, whether it be cassettes or videotapes, reel to reel, what have you, you'll know that you can't just jump to any part of it instantly. You have to physically rewind it or fast forward it to get someplace. Books are the closest thing we have in the real world, in the analog domain, to having nonlinear access. You can possibly jump around in a book by moving the pages, but the normal way you'd read a book is linear from beginning to end. So all these things are places where you have information and each part of the information is stored one after another in a row. Nonlinear access, which is also known as random access, means you can skip around easily. And digital technology is one of the big things that enables this. For example, on a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray or what have you, you can instantly skip to any chapter you want. You don't have to fast forward or rewind. Other forms of nonlinear access include bibliographies or internet links. So there's a couple places where you can find it in the analog domain. Other, another place that you'd find it just in the regular world is a chart or a diagram. The information is laid out two-dimensionally and visually rather than being one item at a time. Most digital data is nonlinear in the way you access it, even if it is stored in a continuous block of memory, wherever that is. So let's look at some of the differences between linear and nonlinear access. Especially when it comes to making things like music and video, nonlinear access can be much more powerful. The only way to edit in the analog domain using tape is to take a razor blade and physically cut the tape and then stick the pieces back together in the order that you want. In a computer sequencer, you can just use your mouse and move things around, and the computer will take care of all of that. Now, back when they were first invented, computers used to be more linear. They would use things like magnetic tape storage. And if you've seen old TV shows about computers, you may see reel-to-reel -reel tapes moving back and forth as computers access it. I used to have a Commodore 64 growing up, and I used to store programs on a cassette tape. But now, thankfully, almost all computer data is nonlinear. All the different forms that we looked at last time, those are almost all nonlinear. And the key difference between these two things is how the data is organized. So with linear storage, every piece of data is dependent on the previous piece. So for example, in your book, you have to have read what was on page 23 to know what page 24 is referring to. With nonlinear access, every piece of data has an address. That means that if you're using a computer to access data, like let's say digital audio, the computer doesn't have to actually move all the numbers around to change the order of the sections of a song, for example, like you would if you were using tape. You'd have to cut it and move it around. Instead, the computer can just refer to different pieces of data in different orders. Also, if you want to copy something, you can store the data once and then refer to it twice, refer to that address where it's stored twice, instead of storing the data twice. So I have two examples for you. One is a bibliography, and the other is old-school mixtapes versus playlists in audio software. So let's look at the bibliography. If you're writing a paper, you need to show your sources, and it wouldn't make much sense to go to the copy machine and physically reprint every source that you used in your paper. Plus, many of your sources will have their own sources, so that would become ridiculous if everybody reprinted everything they referred to. You would have million-page papers. So instead of reprinting the actual data, you just put the address, in other words, where you can find the data, in your paper. So in a way, for centuries, we've been doing something similar to prehistoric internet links. The second example I have for you is the mixtape. And here I mean physically tape, like a cassette tape. Before about 1997 or 98, before people started storing MP3s on their computers, if you wanted to make someone a mixtape, you would have to physically play a CD player or a record player or another tape player onto a tape machine that was recording, and it would take as long as the song took to play. If you wanted to repeat any songs on the same mixtape, you would have to replay that song. 
In the digital world, you can set up a playlist in software like iTunes or Windows Media Player, and your playlist, all the entries in it, simply refer to the different songs that are stored on your hard drive. So if you want to reorganize the playlist or copy the same entry more than once, the computer just has to update the playlist. As you play it back in the software, the computer just finds and plays the songs as it needs to. Here's how this works. As I said a moment ago, each piece of data, whether it be a song or a single sample or a document, what have you, it has an address. It has a way of referring to it. Some of the terms you'll find when using a computer are alias, pointer, reference. All of those are addresses that refer to data that's kept someplace. The computer can keep track of addresses for all sorts of storage that are connected to it. So depending on the details of the logistics of how a program needs to access the data, depending on what it is, the computer program will be written to work with the data in any of those places. There are lots of advantages to this. One is, as a, as a person using the computer, you have instant access to almost anything. It's also much more efficient. Imagine just holding option and dragging a song from one spot in an iTunes playlist to another spot. Poof, there's your copy. If you were doing this to a cassette tape, you would have to physically record over part of the tape with the new song and then re-record all the songs that come after it. You can also do non-destructive editing. So let's look at each of these in turn. First, we have instant access. If your computer program has the address to a piece of data, you can call it up at any time. That means you don't ever have to fast forward or rewind or redo stuff just to change the order. For example, I'm using presentation software called Keynote. And here are some pictures. All I had to do to add these same pictures that I used in a previous slide onto this slide is just copy and paste. The second advantage to nonlinear access is efficiency. So with this example of the pictures again, this is now the third time I've used these pictures. The computer does not have to store all the information that makes up the pixels in these pictures three times. Even though I've copied them to many slides, and I put copy in quotes because it's not really a copy, no more space is taken on my computer. The way this works is the pictures are stored just once, and then for each slide, the computer can just refer to them without storing them again. It's very similar to the playlist example on Windows Media Player, iTunes, or whatever. If you repeat a song, you're just copying a reference. It'll only take just a few numbers that store the address of where the song is. The third advantage to nonlinear access is non-destructive editing, and this is critical for almost every digital audio workstation that you'll find. 